Any further supplementaries? Then question number eight, Russell Fairbrother. My question is to the Minister for Social Development and Employment and ask what reports has she received regarding policy priorities for children? The Honourable Ruth Dice. Order! Oh, the Honourable Morris Girl, Williamson. I'm, I'm, um, slightly perplexed and I'd like some form of an assurance from the government that that is the real Russell Fairbrother. He normally sits over there and that voice was not the voice oh, of Russell not Fairbrother. Of it may have been. Madam Speaker, I've seen the call from Every Child Counts to make children's issues central to political considerations. Our government agrees that children must be at the heart of good policy. That's why we've implemented policies such as 20 free hours early childhood education, introduced paid parental leave provisions and reducing child poverty, all policies that National voted against. Supplementary question, Russell Fairbrother. Supplementary. The Honourable. Not yet, not yet, not yet, ma'am. I know it's Thursday, holidays next week. <laughs> Russell Fairbrother. Russell Fairbrother, supplementary question. My supplementary is the Minister and asks What reports has she received on the outcome? of the Labor-led government's policies for children. The Honourable Ruth Dyson. Madam Speaker, earlier in the year I welcomed research that indicated that 130,000 children have been lifted out of poverty since 2001. A further report will be released shortly confirming that the position of New Zealand children has improved across a wide range of indicators. Infant mortality has halved, immunisation levels have significantly Order. improved and early childhood education participation has increased. Supplementary question, Judy Turner. Supplementary. <laughs> Judy Turner. Supplementary to the Minister. Does the Minister agree that any children's policy that doesn't prioritise improved support for the 10 per cent of children with disabilities who currently only attract uh, 1 per cent of the funding for compulsory education towards their support, that any policy like that lacks credibility? And can she advise us of the priorities of her government in regard to these children? Speaker. The Honourable Ruth Dyson. Madam Speaker, I wouldn't leap to the assumption that the member has in assuming that disabled children are not able to access the curriculum without support. Uh, supplementary question, then question number nine, Judith Collins. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Social Development and Employment. Is she satisfied with work and income's approach to individual case management? If so, why? Speaker. The Honourable Ruth Dyson. I believe that more can be done to ensure that every person receives the support and services that meet their individual circumstances. That's why I've announced even further steps towards the core benefit to modernise the benefit system. A supplementary question, Judith Collins. Thank you, Madam Speaker. To the Minister, is she satisfied with how work and income behaved towards cancer sufferer Richard Burr? as detailed by her ministry in evidence before the Social Services Committee. Madam Speaker, uh, the Honourable Ruth Dyson. Ma Madam Speaker, it's my understanding that the areas where shortcomings in uh, addressing Mr Burr's needs were made clear to the Select Committee and that the Ministry took responsibility for those shortcomings. Supplementary question, uh, Lynn Pillay. Thank you, Madam Speaker. To the Minister, what reports has she received regarding alternative approaches to case management? Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Ruth Dyson. Madam Speaker, I've seen an extraordinary report advocating the return to the failed policies of the 1990s, punitive work testing of sole parents and of sickness and invalid beneficiaries. And I've seen a response that says 
This policy does more to stroke the shibboleths of party supporters than meet any pressing social need. Supplementary question, Judith Collins. To the Minister, does she accept the evidence of Mr Burr's widow that work and income staff, quote, were insensitive to their situation, displayed a lack of empathy, were poor communicators and gave inconsistent advice End quote. And why didn't Work and Income send a case manager to Mr Burr in hospital, but instead summoned Mr Burr out of his hospital bed oh. to attend at oh. Work and Income? Oh. And this was a terminally ill cancer patient. Oh. Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Ruth Dyson. Madam Speaker, I certainly do accept uh, Mrs. Mrs Burr's perception of how she was treated by Work and Income. And my understanding is that the shortcomings in the service delivery have been acknowledged by Work and Income to the select committee the member sits on. And, uh, and my understanding is that they have made efforts to ensure that that does not happen again. I dispute the assertion that the member makes that knowing that Mr Burr was terminally ill and in hospital, he was required to attend a work and income office. I dispute that assertion. Supplementary question, Judith Collins. Well, since the Minister now <coughs> wants to talk about Mrs Burr's perception, does she now accept the findings of the Social Services Committee tabled today in this Parliament that Mr Burr's treatment is not an isolated case? and that the issues raised by Mr Burr's widow and others are serious and need addressing, and if so, what after nine long years is she going to do about it? Speaker. The Honourable Ruth Dyson. Madam Speaker, I am certainly happy to accept any recommendations that the Social Services Select Committee has to make. 